What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. Jesse Laco, AthleteX.com. So today we have our Axe Jeff videos, right? But this time, Jeff does the axing. I'm gonna ask you a question that I can't wait to hear the answer to. I actually did this on Instagram and tons and tons of people gave some answers that were really, really incredible. I think they're gonna be very helpful to everyone that gets a chance to read these and participate. So here's my question for you, a very important question. I'm actually gonna follow up with this with my answers, okay? You meet yourself walking into the gym for the very first time. You can say just three words to yourself. What are they? I know what you're gonna start with. What? Hire Jesse Laco. No, I actually, probably if you asked me today, I would say fire Jesse Laco. Well, that's not very nice of you to say. Um, okay, for real though, probably face pulls are forever. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. So you get the gist here, guys. Three words, what are they? Let me share with you, because that one actually brings up my first point, and that is address your weaknesses. And what that means is don't always migrate towards the things that you're either good at or like to do. You see, the best gains are going to come from finding the things that you're not so good at in the gym or that need the most work, and then finding a way to be consistent with incorporating them into your plan. Oh, so like me working on my posture. Your posture, again, face pulls are very beneficial to most people, but they oftentimes get relegated to the end of the workout or they never are done at all. Hopefully, I've done a lot to maybe change those patterns, but think about it like a golfer. If you're always spending your time at the driving range, but you suck at putting, you're not really going to ever score much better than if you go and you have to actually work on your putting. So that's why I'm really bad at golf? That's one of the very many reasons why you're bad at golf. But that's the point, guys. Remember, don't overlook your weaknesses when your goal is to ultimately be the best you can be. And speaking of being the best you can be, it actually leads me to my second three-word phrase. I, I guess I'm using 15 in this. <laughs> but look, it's going to spark some conversation here. And that is you versus you. You see, if I were to show you a picture of yourself with a group of your friends, who are you looking at first? Yourself. You gonna look at yourself in a picture first? Always. Everyone does that because ultimately, guys, at the end of the day, we all care about ourselves first and foremost. I'm not saying we don't care about other people, but we care about what's happening with ourselves when we're judging what's going on around us. That actually happens in the gym too. I think we go into the gym thinking that everyone's looking at us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's and how I started at least. I did too. I, I, I mentioned here before, in college, I actually was a fairly skinny guy working out in an area where there's a bunch of guys that are a lot bigger than me and always sort of working around like, like this, looking around, thinking people, they didn't care. They didn't care. As a matter of fact, they were sort of cheering me on and rooting for me. Yeah. But the fact is, you think that you're always the one under the microscope when you're not. The best part about changing your mindset to always just wanting to be a better version of you is that you'll always win that game. If you're viewing life as a competition and you are just making sure that you're doing one thing to get better each and every day, you're going to win that competition every single day. And that brings me to my third little nugget of wisdom that I would give young Jeff on his first time into the gym. Oh, and I know what that one is. Rehire Jesse. <laughs> you know that rehire is one word, right? Re, hi. Oh shit, that's right. right. Can I continue, please? So the 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 next phrase that I would say is effort is everything, and it actually ties into the first two things we talked about. If you know what your weaknesses are, and you know that your competition is yourself then the only thing that's going to determine whether or not you see the results that you want to get for years and years down the road is the level of effort that you expend in your workouts. And you know if you're shortchanging yourself there. Yeah. Right? You, you know whether or not you're showing up and giving it your best. I say all the time, you can train long or you can train hard, but you can't do both. I opt for training hard. So I make sure that every single time I go to the gym, I'm doing something that I know I push myself further than I was really willing to go. Right? And if you can get yourself into that space there, that is where the best results lie. But again, if you don't ever really put in the effort, just showing up, which might be one of the things that someone might say in three words, is not enough. You have to put in the effort in addition to showing up, and that's where the real results lie. And so the next three words are three that oftentimes get used far too often here, in my opinion, on YouTube. But nevertheless, it's a decision point that every young lifter sort of is presented with in terms of at least in their own head, and that is natty or not. How do you choose to sort of pursue your path, your lifelong pursuit of fitness, mm -hmm. right? Now, 
I think what happens, every young male at some point sort of looks at someone like The Rock or they look at you know, a guy who's much bigger than them at the gym and they fantasize about what their life might be like if they had those gains already. Maybe they're an athlete in high school, I'll share my story in a second here, where you fantasize, well, what would it be like? I'd be so much better if I was bigger to play the sport for me, football. So this natty or not question, though, sort of leads to a moral question of cheat code or not, in uh, my opinion. Can I make a confession? Oh, do you have something to share here, Jesse? I do. It's, On Natty or Not? It's very embarrassing. Is this where we're going to talk about Juicy Laco in terms of your new gains? No. Um, I never beat Contra on its own. I had to use a Contra code, okay? Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start. I have it blazing in the back of my head, and I'm embarrassed of it. <laughs> do you need a moment here to share? Or are you good? I'm good. All right. You got it off your chest? That's off my chest. <laughs> All right. I never beat Contra either. So... When I grew up, I said I'd share my story. For those who've already heard it, I'll share it again. When I grew up, my father was a physician. He still is actually a practicing physician these days. I grew up in a divorced household. And my father threatened me that if he ever caught me with anything, any drugs, even alcohol, he'd throw me out of the house. So he said, steroids, uh, recreational drugs, alcohol, out of the house. So what did I do? I actually never got drunk a day in my life, and that's a true story. You need to loosen up. I, I was so scared of losing the foundation of my home that I decided I'm not doing any of that. Mm -hmm. But what happened is, what played out ultimately for me was a sense of reward, of achievement and accomplishment that I got because every single thing I did was the result of my own achievements and my own hard work. Going back to sort of the you versus you concept that we talked about. Right. So I think that when you're pursuing, when you have the, the, this, this path presented in front of you, I'm not putting anyone down that goes down, the, the, again, the cheat code path in my, in my opinion, but I do think that you have to consider the long-term repercussions of this. And, and, and please don't tell me about, well, it's just TRT. Because I made a video about this in the past. And again, I will, I will explain this in a second here. But I made a video where I came down rather harshly on the guy who said, you can't build muscle over 35 without TRT. Yeah, that's bullshit. It, it's just complete bullshit. And again, or the other guy that wrote in recently that said, you can't be ripped over 40 without, without TRT. TRT. Again, complete and utter bullshit that we'll cover in my next phrase on nutrition. Guys, don't sell yourself short that way. And please don't use your TRT as a smoke screen for the other stuff that you're doing or a cover up for it's just TRT. Guys, all of these things are enhancements to getting you to a place that others maybe can't get to naturally. naturally. I believe that with the right dedication and consistency of effort, you're gonna be able to get amazing results if you put in the hard work, okay? You don't need to get there as fast as you think you might need to get there. Jesse himself took some criticism oh, for I what? Taking four or five years to, to, to get to where you are now. Yeah, and you know what? I'm kinda, honestly, I'm kinda happy with where I'm at now given how long I've been training and I'm excited to see where I go from here. I don't care how slow it goes, it's as long as I get there. So I'm not trying to take my father's hardline stance on this, guys. I recognize the medical necessity for some people to get to a point where they're at a healthy level of testosterone, but why does it seem that most of the guys that quickly decide I'm low T and I need to go do something or I need to jump on some gear, why is it that they're mostly gym going guys? Uh, that's it's a good, good question, isn't it? Yeah. Because they tend to want to jump to that conclusion a lot faster because they want to get the end result of that. Instead, put in the hard work, rely on the effort is everything approach and look at that you versus you and I promise you, better results await you long term, at least healthier. And that brings us to that next three word nugget that I alluded to already here on nutrition. Oh, and that I know is, this one, I know this one. I have it written down. Feed the dogs. Feed the dog, what does that mean? Oh, that's a message from your wife. She just wants a reminder for you to feed the dogs. <laughs> can, can I lose this book for it, please? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> we're talking about nutrition, guys. I said that nutrition is where you need to focus your efforts. I think as a, as a young guy, when I first started out, in a time when I was supposed to be getting a lot of newbie gains, my nutrition was so bad, epically bad. I never ate well at all. Maybe I would have a family dinner that had good food in it, but the whole rest of the day I was waking up eating nothing but Dunkin' Donuts and Hostess cupcakes for lunch and, and, and everything I could possibly put in my body that was bad. And I wasn't supporting those early gains with better nutrition. I regret that entirely. I think I could have made a lot more progress early on. <clears throat> <clears throat> reminds me of somebody <clears throat> that I think was eating <clears throat> not so well. <sighs> back, All right, been there, done that. I know, Jeff. Like, but you know, listen, you can make a lot of progress when you do focus on your nutrition. You can overcome a lot of maybe shortcomings if you focus on your nutrition. Yeah. 
right? And, and, and I'm, I'm, I've been one on here to talk about the fact that I don't do as much conditioning as I would like, knowing the benefits that I would get for my heart. However, if you're willing to have a real dedication to your nutrition, and I mean consistency every single day. Most people probably can't follow the type of nutrition plan that I follow. In other words, you've seen what I eat uh, in my What Jeff Cavalier Eats Day of Eating video, and I'll link that at the end of the video. But like, I can remain eating that consistently day in, day out, day in, and day out. If you remain consistent with the nutrition, guys, and you focus on good, high-quality nutrition, not only will you look your best, but you'll feel your best as well, and I really think that's where you need to focus the majority of your efforts. If Even if there's just three words that I could give myself, that would be it right there. And so with that, guys, I'm actually, can I actually increase this from 15 words to 18? Yeah, why not? I mean, I'm already way over the limit. I'm giving people good suggestions here. Remember, guys, I want you to leave your three words what you would tell the version of you walking into the gym for the first time, what are you gonna say? Make sure you leave it in the comments below. I would also like to add, consistency is key. And I've seen a lot of people say, trust the process, walk, don't run. They're all saying the same thing. Consistency is key. I just talked about it with nutrition, but it really applies to all these things here. Consistently address those weaknesses. Consistently make sure that you're the target of your own criticism and don't let other people judge you and what you have to do. Remember to bring the effort every single time. Stay on that path that you decide in terms of remaining natural and committing to it and being, feeling the rewards of doing that. Focus on nutrition. Everything is based around consistency and I wanna make sure that you guys can do that. If you're looking for a consistent plan, guys, we have all of them available for you over at athletex.com. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, I can't wait to hear what your comments are. Make sure you leave them below. Also, if you haven't done so, make sure you click subscribe and turn your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. All right. I'll see you oh, soon. Jeff. Can I increase this to uh, 21 words? Sadly, I'm going to think I don't want to hear this. It's give Jesse raise. I didn't want to hear this. Oh, come on.